Welcome back to Life is Strange Before the Storm. Chloe's just been dropped off at Blackwell High School by David. <laughs> that was a fun ride. So our goal at the moment is to get our DVD from Steph. Also, I love the fact that your goal is just handwriting on her literal hand. Like, just writes notes to herself on her hand. That's so cool. Alright, let's have a look around. Uh, Nathan and tights. Can't unsee. How could I possibly make it through a day in this place without a little chemical assistance? Drugs. They will mess you up. Well, I'm convinced. Meh. Well, at least not for now. Oh, that's right, Warren. To see Warren or Brooke. I remember Warren was really into sci-fi stuff, wasn't he? can speak with Elliot again. I don't really want to, though. They want to go with me to the Tempest. But Chloe does not have time for Elliot. Chloe only has time for Max. And maybe Rachel Amber. Skip. Is that their name? Skip. Who would we just get a text message from? Steph. I'm at the picnic tables with Mikey. Picnic tables. Ah, over that way, I think. Well, I'll go there in a bit. Skip Matthews, Blackwell's finest. He's not so bad for a mall cop. You know what? This is definitely a private school. If they have security. Hey, Skip. Stopped any gang wars lately? Not today. Oof. Looks like you did, though. Huh? Ah. Right. Whatever. I did ask Justin Williams' mom to move her Mercedes out of handicapped parking. That ass. Yeah, you know how I roll. <laughs> So, I went to the mill last night, caught Firewalk live. You went to the mill? Wait, you saw Firewalk? It was cool. Whoa, pretty wicked. I didn't know you were into music like that. What, like good music? <laughs> Preach it, sister. I'm in a band, actually. No shit, really? We're called Pisshead. It's not a big deal or anything. I mean, I mean, I'm trying to get our demo out there, but it's hard. Pisshead, huh? W would you maybe want to hear it? Our demo, I, I mean. Pisshead. That is. That is hashtag hella cool. I love that name. Yeah. Okay. Great. Hit got 
got nothing Say we got something Before we let the cheap shots throw Keep sweet, wrapped in low No, we got nothing wrong I know what you say, we got nothing So, what did you think? That was actually pretty cool. Although, Skip's facial expressions and the way he kept cocking his head to the side were really awkward and made me feel like he was staring into my soul. That was really good, man. If Pisshead came on the radio, I'd turn that shit up. Oh, and that icon that just appeared in the top left, I think that's saying that there will be consequences for what you just did. So it basically means Clementine will remember that. Because <laughs> uh, that's the sort of thing that shows up when you make a decision. You know, when it's a big decision where, like, time freezes and it presents you with uh, your two options. But it also does that for smaller moments like this. So I'm guessing these will have... These smaller moments probably will have consequences, but most likely not as big as the big moments. Oh, right on. Awesome, Chloe, thanks. So apparently that will have consequences. Skip's gonna help me out at some point, maybe? Oh, I remember you. One of the teachers. Here's my DVD from Steph. I bet she's nerding it up with Mikey somewhere. Morning, Miss Grant. Chloe, are you alright? Yeah, I'm fine. Hmm. What do you think of this hypothesis? That you'll be in your seat by the time chemistry class begins today. Science is all about discovery, Miss Grant. Guess you'll have to wait and see. With all the change that's happening at Blackwell of late, I suppose I can appreciate your consistent wit, Chloe. What kind of change do you mean? Well... The Prescotts have made an extremely generous donation to the school, which is good, but instead of going to support more science and mathematics, it's all being dedicated to the arts. You don't think more money should be spent in the arts? It's not that exactly. I recently made the case that STEM programs should receive more support, but apparently our new donors disagree with me. Such is life, I suppose. Miss Grant actually seems sad. I had forgotten all about the Prescotts until now. That's right, the Prescotts, going all to the arts. Hmm. Remember there's a bit of a relationship between the Prescotts, and I don't remember his name, but the serial killer from The Life is Strange, who was teaching a photography class. I'm guessing that's why all the money went to the arts. Also, look at the walk cycle on that person walking by right now. There's something wrong with it. Got a strange leg, a little hitch in the in the leg of <laughs> walking animation. Maybe in another six months, a new donor will come along with money for, I don't know, more lasers. More lasers? Do we have any lasers? Sadly, no. That is sad. The only thing I remember about Miss Grant is in the other game, in the original Life is Strange, at one point they ax asked Max to fill out some sort of a petition. This is literally all I remember about them. Don't walk on the stage. Eh. I should probably be getting to class, but I just don't care. Did last night really happen? The internet says it did, but I still can't believe it. 
Rachel Amber. The drama star, honor student, popular princess of Blackwell. Swoops in like a Batman to save my ass and thrash to firewalk? Either that was a dream, or real life just got a shit ton crazier. Principal Wells. Hey. Chloe Price. Is that a black eye? I'm... Uh, yep. I hope you know that Blackwell provides confidential counseling services for all our students. We are a safe space for any issue. I'm good. It's the other guy who needed a safe space. From me. You never fail to conform to your reputation, do you? Miss Price, the sign clearly says do not walk on the stage. Such disregard for your fellow students' efforts won't alleviate your record of major infractions. If I remember right, the principal is pretty much in the pocketbooks of the Prescotts and is a total gutless prick. How many minor infractions and a major one? This is no joke, Miss Price. Who's joking? You've seen my math grades. Perhaps you will find me less amusing if I mention the various allegations I've been hearing about your drug use. You know Blackwell has a zero-tolerance policy. Do I have to initiate a search of your person in order to establish the veracity of these allegations, Miss Price? That's what I thought. I'll look forward to seeing you in my office after school today. How does that sound? Actually, no. Wells really has it out for me. I have to convince him it's in his best interest to back off. Actually, sir, I'm gonna go with no. Ah, so you're going to mouth off to me now, yes? And here I thought your well of witticisms had finally run dry. Oh, I get it. Because your name is Wells, right? You go around all day just hoping for an opportunity to make well references? This must be a big moment for you. Jokes? In my experience, that's how the guilty cover up their infractions. Clearly, you haven't studied the wake-and-bake clause of the Stoner Constitution. All stinky herbs shall be smoked before entering school premises. So, you are admitting to having consumed marijuana this morning. I think that was maybe. maybe the wrong option. Or maybe I want to see if you have what it takes to make me pee into a cup. Seriously, I really do- That's quite enough. I do not need to search you, Miss Price. Your words alone have convinced me of your guilt. You will meet me in my office after school for a formal reprimand. Great. Just... Great. God, that guy's like a robot, isn't he? Ooh, someone's been smoking in the corner. And that someone is Chloe. <laughs> no surprise there. Not exactly the best spot Students to hide, though. Students at Blackwell have this herd instinct to glom up into little groups like sheep. And if you just want to be alone, you get labeled like some dangerous outsider. Just like any other prison. Except now the prison follows you wherever you go, thanks to social media. I can't believe Rachel posted a photo of the two of us together last night. Am I still an outsider if I'm hanging out with Rachel Amber now? And what does it mean that hanging out was so awesome? Does that make me just the same as every other student here? Nah, fuck that. Good 
article is writing. Jack has a nice ass. Mr. B is a dick. Smoke a fatty, Steph Brenda. Steph and Mikey normally post up somewhere quiet in the courtyard. Fuck the law? Sit on my Johnson. I mustard big? Maybe I should go see Steph. Let's do that. Steph Gingrich and Mikey North, Blackwell's premier indoor kids. Steph has created something of a business selling pirated DVDs to other students. If I had known the Celestial Avenger was bloodied, I would have totally given him my potion. It was a skill challenge. Potion wouldn't have worked. Skill challenge? It's part of the tabletop game we play. You wouldn't understand. Give me a break, nerds. I've heard of tabletop games. Cool. Now that is a creature I wouldn't want to fight. Got my DVD? One Blade Runner. Director's cut coming right up. Nice. Sweet. Five bucks, right? Keep it. I'm just glad someone here appreciates the classics. You even asked for the director's cut, which took out the shitty voiceover and replaced it with a sweet dream sequence. Dream life over real life. That's my motto. Right on. Hey, do you know if Rachel's a gamer? Rachel Amber? You're asking me? Didn't you two go out last night, or was it just, like, a friend thing? It wasn't a friend thing. Also, I think Mikey's shirt says, Cool story, bro. Cool story, bro. This is set in 2010, right? When did that start as a meme? I'm going to research the origins of this meme to see if I can cross-reference it with the dates we've seen in this game, because this is very important to me. Ah, dang it, they get a pass. Apparently it's been used as early as 2008. Okay, okay, you win. I don't know what you heard, but Rachel and I barely know each other. Oh, sweet. <laughs> Steph has a crush. Chloe, you should join her game. Yeah, I don't have 50 hours right now. Thanks, though. We're at the end of the campaign, so it'll only take, like, 20 minutes? What else have you got to do before class? Hmm. I still want to look around. Not really in the mood. Maybe later. You know where to find us. DVD, check. Next stop, chemistry class. Joy. Dormitories. Right, that's where Max lived, right? In Life no, is Strange. Chloe. Class is back the other way. Yeah, that's right, because Max doesn't uh, doesn't live in the area. Their parents were still back in Seattle, I think. Ah, uh, Evan. Amazing photographer, but such a bleeding heart. What soapbox is he on today? Sign up today. I see two signatures. Got a muffin and a black coffee. Chloe, I'd like to talk to you about wildfire awareness and prevention. Good morning to you too, Evan. According to the Department of Forestry, over 90% of this season's fires were caused by humans. That's a record high and completely preventable. This is for college, right? I don't believe you actually care about this. My interest in fire prevention is completely sincere. Besides, I intend to get into college on the strength of my photography alone. Do you think Rachel Amber would be willing to pose for my portfolio? She's so artistic. I bet she would be a dream model. What do you think? I guess. I gotta run. Wait, one last thing. Will you sign my petition to have a fire safety assembly at school? 
Uh, sure. Sure. I love assemblies. Some of the best naps of my life. Wow, thanks. I did not see that coming. You being, you know, interested in complicated issues, helping out with the public. Do you want me to change my mind? I... No. <laughs> How seriously am I taking this right now? Hmm. Real name? I'll put my real name on it. There you go. Just don't expect this to become a habit. Blackwell Academy, home of tomorrow's leaders. Oh, wow, I'm the first actual real person to sign it. Principal Dixon, big... I'm not sure what that is, big something balls. What? Caring about important issues? Caring in general. Wait, what? I'm not quite sure what just happened there. I just pressed a button. Maybe the wrong button? I don't know. I can tell Justin's wearing his eau de gange. Damn, girl. That eye looks sick. What's going on? Last night, I scoped out this crazy party at the old mill up north. Kind of a DIY thing. Wow, oh, no shit. I thought that place was like, meth central. My cousin met this hooker there, Whatever. And... It was cool, okay? You wouldn't understand. Hey, out of the blue question, what do you think of Rachel Amber? She is amazing. Uh, if you're into chicks that are hot, smart, and hot. <laughs> I mean, she helped me out a while back. I was failing algebra hard. I believe you. Check it. After I bombed my midterm last fall, she tutored me for the rest of the semester. And then I crushed it. C+. Huh. <laughs> All right. Guess I'll see you in class. Word. The future needs excellence. The future's an asshole. Victoria. Ugh, Victoria Chase. I'd rather vomit razor blades than talk to her. Let's do it anyway, for fun. Ah, oh, Carrie Price! It's Chloe. Oh, right. I'm just teasing. People have been taking me so seriously since I won the Beacon's Young Artist Award for my photography. You don't say. Between that and the Vortex Club, it's hard to keep people from putting me up on a pedestal or whatever. But you know all about that. What, with Rachel Amber? Am I right? Wow, the Young Artist Award. Oh, it's not a big deal or anything. Like, a hundred people submitted work and my photography won. Congrats, I guess. So the Beacon's putting me up on the front page of the lifestyle section. Who cares? You hang with the Vortex Club? I mean, I'm technically not a member, but I am being courted. I'm not sure The club I... should be a collection of Blackwell elites, but instead, it's some anti-bullying, hand-holding kumbaya shit. Not when I'm a senior. Wait. What about Rachel Amber? Rachel posted a slamming selfie of you two having the time of your lives. Do tell. Tell what, Victoria? It's a photo. Big deal. But it's on Facebook! I, I mean, that basically means you and Rachel are like BFFs. We're really not. Uh, so, what's she into? You know, what's her thing? Is it drugs? I'm not judging or anything. I figure if she's hanging out with you, she must be into some effed up shit. <laughs> you know? Seriously, I don't know why you're talking to me about Rachel. Oh, everybody loves her. Little Miss Perfect. So you're jealous of Rachel Amber. That's what's happening right now. Gotcha. 
Oh, God, I don't have time for this. I didn't even finish the chemistry assignment, and you're being you. Oh. I can sabotage her homework, but throw it in the water. Nah. Why would Rachel Amber ever hang out with Carrie Price? It's Chloe. Who walks like that? Samantha Myers, school wallflower. She could give you a run for your money, Max. Hey, Chloe. Hey, Samantha. What are you reading? Who's afraid of Virginia Woolf? I read that last year in Mrs. Hoyta's English class. I didn't think you did homework. <laughs> Normally I don't, but the play was actually good. What did you like about it? The story is about how relationships only work if people are willing to lie to each other. I'm not sure if you're joking. Sorry, I'm a little slow sometimes. I'm a little bitchy sometimes, so it's cool. People always say that. But I think you're actually... Sorry, Chloe. No one says anything like that. I don't know what I'm actually talking about. I bet. Oh, they're so awkward. They seem nice, though. What's with this paper trail? From late trail? to class, that's just one more excuse for Mom to sick David on me. True, but we have things to look at. I prefer to wake and bake. But hey, to each their own. But fire's so pretty. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? Winning while doping isn't winning at all. It's a quick trip to the deep end of failure. Okay, should I head to class or to the D&D &D thing? Let's head to the D&D &D thing. Ready to begin your adventure? Just in time, too. Mikey was about to seriously die a horrible and painful death. Uh, what the hell? Game on, nerds. Here's a character sheet. You are an elf barbarian. <laughs> nice. I could totally see myself as an elf barbarian. I know. I'm good. All right, let's get started. You were both famous heroes in the kingdom of Avernon, a once peaceful land now laid to waste by the bloodthirsty raiders of the Black Well. Alone, you have fought your way through the raider camps, seeking their warlord leader, Durgaron, the Unscarred. As you enter the final camp, bloodied and weary, you see your fellow hero approaching from the opposite direction. I raise my staff to you in greeting. I am Elamon, wizard of the Third Circle, foremost advisor to King Tiberius, and sworn defender of Avernon. Introduce your character. Y yeah, okay. Uh, I'm an elf barbarian named... Uh, Calamastia. Super into it. Not bad. The two heroes... Hold on. Elamon narrows his eyes at the elf in front of him and says, I am here to defeat Durgaron, the Unscar. In the name of King Tiberius, what makes you think you are worthy to fight alongside me? I once stabbed a guy in the chest with a sword, and it went all the way through and killed the guy behind him too. True story. <laughs> you stand at a three-way crossing. To your left, the raiders' training ground. To your right, their prison camp. Straight ahead, an enormous, ostentatious tent that could only belong to Durgaron, the Unscarred. Which way do you go? Straight ahead, right? We're supposed to kill the Dur. 
dude. Elamon frowns. The raiders could have some good loot at the training ground, and surely it is our duty to free all those prisoners. Your choice, newbie. Where do you wish to go? Just trying to get some equipment. Loot sounds good. Let's go to the training ground. Sweet. Upon arriving at the training ground, you are spotted by a heavy set orc who immediately shouts and points. There are a dozen raiders on the training field, all of whom raise their weapons and charge. Okay. So what do we do? I cast Urgle's Acid Blast. Um, overkill? Bam! You conjure up a wave of acid that washes over the charging orcs. Every raider suddenly starts screaming and writhing in pain. There's a sweet and sour kind of smell as the flesh melts off their bones like warm candle wax. Holy shit. You see why I haven't really needed a partner? The heavy set orc sergeant still remains. He runs at you swinging a massive warhammer. All yours. I knee him. Right in the orc balls. Success. The orc clutches his groin, never to father children again. Ouch. Your turn again, Chloe. I do a pommel strike. I strike his pommel hard. <laughs> um, what did I say? A pommel is the end of a sword handle. Pommel strike is where you hit the guy with it. Ah, oh, damn it. Okay, I do that. Except you're not wielding a sword, you're wielding an axe. Dang it. This sucks. <laughs> it's all right. Try using your- You've delayed too long. The orc swings his warhammer at your head, barely missing your move. Okay, let's end this. Fatal cleave. You swing your great axe downward with both hands. The orc blinks, then splits open like a hot dog bun. Fuck yeah! I'm awesome at this game. It's going well. What about the loot? Well, as the training ground is now a roiling pit of acid, it's unlikely any loot survived. Dang. Don't worry, Alamon guy. We all make mistakes. Alamon? Nods. Calamastia, the elf barbarian, is most wise and forgiving. What's next? Let's free those prisoners. Guess it's time to free some peeps. Let's go to the prison camp. You behold a field of standing iron cages, each imprisoning a human villager, calling out for you to free them. Only a small, elderly dragonkin is keeping watch. He notices you, and in terror, runs into one of the few empty cages and locks himself in. Ah, poor little guy. What's a dragonkin? Dragonkin are like little dragon people. They're assholes. I bet he has all the keys. Oh, okay. Hey, shitface! Get out of there! The dragonkin hops up and down, shaking his ring of keys at you. He shouts in a strange language. Whatever he's saying, probably isn't flattering. Got any useful spells in that robe of yours? Nothing that wouldn't blow up the cage and everything in it. Tempt with bread, pick the lock, or intimidate. Let's intimidate. Intimidate? That's a skill I have. Can I do that? I want the little bastard to shit his pants. You can try. What do you say? Listen up, you little lizard. Unfortunately, he doesn't speak common, which means he can't- I cast communication on the dragonkin. Shit. Really? Now he can understand every word you say. Time to work some real magic. So this is called a skill challenge, where you try to use- Oh, I know what this is. I grab the bars of the cage and lean in, nice and close. He steps back, his scaly skin quivering in fear. What do you say? I wiggle my hand. Hey, dragonkin guy. Want to become my meat puppet? How it works is I shove my arm up your ass into your head, and then I can control your mouth from the inside to say things. Uh, 
He doesn't seem to like that idea. <laughs> Neither do I. <laughs> the Jesus. dragon can please with you. Please don't harm me, tall one. But I cannot give you key. Durgaron, much taller and meaner than you. You're short, I say. But you can always get shorter. Give me the key, or I'll chop off your legs and beat you to death with them. The uh, dragon can cowers before you, looking left and right. He opens his jaws, and you think he's about to yell for help. I interrupt his yell by shoving my axe into the cage, pinning his head to the bars without hurting him. Then I say the following. This is going to be good. Here's what's up. I'm going to carve the skin from your bones. Then I'm going to turn your skin into a little leather handbag that I'll shove your skinless body into so I can carry it around with me wherever I go. That way, the next time some asshat refuses to give me a key I want, I can pull your body out and show them what happens. How does that sound? Uh, wow. That was nuts. I'm going to give you a plus ten bonus to charisma. Go ahead and roll. A small pool of urine collects under the elderly dragonkin as, hands trembling, it hands you the keys. Then, it dies of fear. Awesome. Yeah! Go team! Why don't you start unlocking the prisoners? I'm on it. As you free them, the prisoners run away from you in fear. What's next? It's tent time. You enter the tent to find Durgaron. Warlord of the Raiders of the Black Well, sitting comfortably at his throne. He's a huge red-eyed minotaur, swathed in a fine black cloak, gripping a two-handed sword that's easily six feet long. His laughter bellows. Wah, ha, 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 ha. Your <laughs> lands and people are already mine. I don't think she Your exactly had the voice for that. You mean nothing. Your kingdom was weak. You are weak. What an asshole. I got this. I cast Zael's Cataclysmic Cone of Fire. The fire fizzles out on contact. Durgaron laughs again, holding up his right arm to show off his bracer of fire immunity. Shit. All of my battle spells are fire-based. Except for, you know, Acid Blast, which someone used unnecessarily to show off for Chloe. Calamastia? What'll it be? Oh, holy shit! Uh, annihilation Strike! That sounds boss as fuck! One? That's bad, right? Not for me. As you take your first step, you trip on a rock, collapsing onto the ground in a clangy jumble of metal. Your axe swings wildly to the side. Mikey, roll a reflex save. Oh no... Three. Your axe strikes Elamon's leg. Um, legs. Plural. Severing both feet at the ankles. Uh-oh. I am so sorry. Durgaron moves toward the crippled Elmon. Oh, shit! I told you this was my best boss. You didn't tell me my character might die. Durgaron approaches, stomping his bloody hooves. Stomp. Stomp. Stop. This is all my fault. Sort of. What should I do? I jump in front of Elamon. Wow. Thanks, Chloe. I mean, thanks, Calamastia. Okay. Durgaron has now turned his attention toward you. Bring it. He charges, thrusting madly with his great sword. Shit! Oh no. Your attempt to dodge his thrust fails. Durgaron laughs as he impales you on his blade, lifting you high into the air. Seriously? I can't do anything with that stupid bracer. I'm sorry, Chloe. Hey, I chopped your feet off. <laughs> We're even. You feel your strength. Draining away as Durgaron lifts you higher into the air. It hurts like hell. What do you do? 
I bring my axe down onto his arm. The one with the fire bracer thingy. Oh, brilliant. You'll have to roll high to hit. You're almost dead. 20! Fuck yes! You bring your axe down in a wicked chop, severing his arm completely. His bracer of fire immunity clangs to the ground. I cast Gignomi's Fire Strike of Flame! Oh, snap! Lying on the ground, you conjure a flaming spear, which flies from your hands to spear Durgaron in the chest, incinerating him completely from the inside out. Damn, Elamon. Durgaron is defeated, but your wounds were too great. I'm afraid Calamastia is dead. I actually feel sad right now. Better to have died a hero than live as a coward. That was fun. Check out what I drew. Mikey's got serious drawing skills. Glad you enjoyed it, Chloe. Yeah, I'll adventure with you anytime. <laughs> we'll see. Thanks for the game, nerds. That was cool. I wasn't expecting it to be so long and extensive. I thought it would just be a sort of fade out thing, couple words, and then go to school, but I got to actually play. Alright, well, I think that's a pretty good place to end this episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, we're gonna go to class and learn some chemistry.